Hey there, friends and enemies. Joe Per here again. And we have another This Week at Bungie to go over. This time we got a little sneak preview of Season of the Deep. I'm very excited about next season. Season 21 is shaping up to be really cool. So let's check out everything they have to say. Uh, they go over last week's TWAB, uh, as well as the information that they released yesterday about some super and ability changes coming next season, which are very exciting. Uh, Guardian Games, Season of the Deep first look, key art. Details about the new strand aspects they've already talked about a little bit. Uh, exotic armor focusing huge. Uh, recapping big uh, changes coming with abilities. That's the stuff we already know about. I went over that in a video already. If you missed that, I'll link in the description below. Upcoming economy and crafting updates. A note on upcoming season passes. Trials of Osiris updates. Uh, just a lot going on. So one class to rule them all. Uh, right now, Titans are pretty much dominating, dominating Guardian games, as you would expect with uh, uh, because of Zavala. But then here we go. Our first look at Season of the Deep, and this looks gorgeous. I am so stoked to get into this because this is kind of wild. Some things to take in. We obviously have these new armor sets, which look really sick. Uh, we've got Sloane, who looks like she's part taken now. Wild, and this big eye from a Leviathan-type creature in the sea. Awesome. I'm very excited about this. We know that Sloan is coming back, which is very, very cool. And I can't wait to see how they pull that off. So that's very nice. Uh, strand aspects. We got Threaded Spectre for the Hunter. This one is going to activate your class ability to leave behind a decoy woven from strand matter that draws the attention of nearby combatants. We haven't really had a taunt mechanic in Destiny 2. So that sounds very, very cool. And I'm really pretty excited about it. Uh, when players activate their dodge, they leave behind a decoy. Enemies will shoot at the threat of Spectre, and when it's destroyed or expired, gives a hunter and their fire team enough time to get to safety. When destroyed, a threaded Spectre explodes into two Threadlings. Threaded Spectre gives the hunter players access to Threadling generation and a new way to control the battlefield. I like that a lot. I feel like that could be a game changer for hunter builds, especially in endgame PvE. We got Fletchless Storm for the Titan. With Fletcher's Storm, Berserkers have access to a powerful new slide melee attack that quickly launches them up in the air and blasts away any nearby enemies. While still airborne, press the melee again to fire a cluster of tracking projectiles that deal heavy damage and unravel enemies. Fletching Storm provides the Berserker with a ranged melee option. So, pretty nice. Could be really good. So, I'm very excited to see how that goes. Uh, repeatedly activating melee will chain additional throws, by the way. I saw that. That is very nice. Uh, I like these aspects. They sound like they're going to be impactful. Then we have the uh, Wanderer for the Warlock. Tangles you throw attached to enemies and detonate into a suspending burst. Threadling final blows create a tangle. Threadling builds are about to be insane. I can already see it coming. Uh, the Wanderer gives Broodweavers another way to upgrade the tangles and grants access to suspend effect without needing a shackle grenade, which is good. You can use that on unstoppable champs and the like. So... Uh, all of these sound awesome, all right? So I'm very excited to get hands-on, and we'll definitely make some builds with these included, and I cannot wait. So they talked about the Stasis, Strand, and Light subclasses get their glow-ups for Season 21. Like I said, I went over that in the video. Economy changes. So uh, no change to the Power Floor, Soft Cap, or Powerful Cap, which I think is a good thing. Exotic Armor Focusing, that's very good. It looks like it's going to be expensive, but we have Tier 1 which is old exotics and requires one exotic engram 30k glimmer and one ascendant shard exotic focusing two uh, requires associated uh, expansion as well as a higher cost uh, including three ascendant shards and one exotic cipher but armor stat packages are upgraded so you can expect the average stats to be in the mid 60s which is massive i wonder if it works if you toss on uh the mod for your ghost where you can get a high stat roll of a certain type like for example resilience or something like that if you get stat spikes on that and that does work with getting these exotics that's going to be very valuable so focus the specific uh, exotic armor for the higher cost which is nice so um it looks like that's going to be a good thing i think overall it is going to be fairly expensive but if you're guaranteed getting the exotics that you want i think that's a good thing so since we're not raising the pinnacle cap, the need for many pinnacle legendaries has uh, significantly dropped. So they're completing base activities into a focusable, powerful exotic engram. This gives most players three to nine free, achievable, and deterministic weekly exotic engrams. So 
ready for focusing. Massive, actually massive. I think that's really, really good and uh, will allow people to get a ton of exotics. And if you don't focus it like directly, you can just probably just get a random exotic, uh, whatever you want for that character. So other focusable exotic engrams, random world drops, season pass, uh, tracks, and then vendor reputation. Deep side activation and crafting economy. Ba ba bum. You, uh, we're adding the ability to electively activate deep sight on weapon instances to obtain pattern progress. This capability will be accessible through a new mod slot in the weapon detail screen for eligible weapons. So, uh, you will need a new deep sight harmonizer currency and more currency. Yay! Uh, the deep sight harmonizer can be obtained from season pass rank wars three in the freeze. Ranks and another three in the paid. Not all weapon instances will be compatible with deep sight activation. You will be prevented from activating deep sight for a weapon that has already had its pattern unlocked. So, weapons that previously had deep sight will be ineligible. Uh, that's okay. I mean, we'll see how that works in in actual practice. Crafting costs will also see a change. Legendary shard costs will be removed from all crafting components. Glimmer and enhancement course will remain. Enhancement co uh, weapon costs will be based on mass weapon master costs and thus will uh, still require legendary shards. Quality of life updates that we think you'll enjoy. So all old raids are getting the triumph boost for your exotic weapons, which is good. Uh, you're going to have a better chance of getting like 1k voices if you have some of the challenges done, which I think is a good thing. Uh, so you can get um, everything from 1000 voices Eyes of Tomorrow, Collective Obligation, and uh, Vex Myth of Class, which is all very, very good. And will give people a reason to jump back in if they don't have those exotics. Touch of Malice, I think that's good. Oh, finer, Finest Mal <laughs> Matter Weave and Rainmaker Depreciation. Oh, finally, you'll be able to delete those and get either an Enhancement Core or a Glimmer. Massive. That's actually a big change I've been waiting for. Because I don't ever use them and I have hundreds of each. It's crazy. Uh, Vanguard bounty updates. Uh, da, da, da. So yeah, they're making changes to daily bounties. Uh, essentially, you can complete them anywhere. You'll complete them faster in Vanguard and Nightfalls, but they're going to be longer to do if you do them outside of the Vanguard activities. Uh, we also added one new repeatable bounty, one for getting kills and uh, fire team kills. A uh, good boy is coming back. We got the uh, the dog is coming back in season twenty one. That's massive. Oh, they're so they're increasing the cost of the season pass from a thousand to twelve hundred silver. This is a little bit of a problem because they don't sell any bundles that have twelve hundred silver specifically. Plus, it's a weird time frame because of how underwhelming people have thought Lightfall to be. I've enjoyed Lightfall in Season of Defiance, but because of the general community feedback, I'm surprised they did this now. Uh, but they did say pacing will remain unchanged for the Lightfall Standard Edition uh, and Lightfall Plus Annual Pass will be the same. So, like, I bought the Lightfall Plus Annual Pass, so I don't have to worry about it. And they're looking to maximize their... We'll be evaluating new approaches to post-launch content in the year of the final shape. So I think the final shape is going to be much different. So this is just for essentially three seasons. Uh, new rewards for trials. Uh, oh, yeah. The trials rewards are always spicy. I like those and they're going to glow. So that's going to be good. Plus they have a shader for trials as well. Oh, oh that's bad. That's good. I, I think adding more cosmetics like that is a very good thing. Will be permanently unlocked. You can only unlock one of these shaders per season. So that's, I think that's good. Every season you'll have a new one to chase. If you don't have it next season, the weapons coming in are the messenger and unexpected resurgent adaptive arc glaive. We'll see. I, I like glaives personally, but I know a lot of people aren't fans of them. So we'll see how they go. Uh, Inquisitor and whistler's whim are leaving. Uh, let's talk about labs. So it looks like they are implementing the new matchmaking. There was a problem with the lobby balancing. That's one of the issues they had uh, with last with the last trials labs. So they're going to do away with that. Second issue is that they did not communicate properly starting Sunday reset. Players who have been plot flaws could still farm adepts, but they're changing that to be able to farm flawless right at Friday, which I think is good. Um, do 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 do. So, yeah, they like the two soft pools, but they're going to kind of see how it goes. That's going to be implemented next season, and it should be, 
yeah, it should be interesting. Oh, they're changing it to Dominion, which is the capture the the point mode. So that's going to be full time in trials. Plus, you're going to have a new starting quest before you can jump into trials if you haven't played before. I would imagine um, completing competitive, raise your power level, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think that's good. It makes sense. So trials passages are being changed. We went over that previously. Dominion is, uh, yeah, they want it to not just be elimination, which I think is good because it kind of changes the way people play. The only downside for a lot is the fact that wells and bubbles are pretty dominant for me personally i don't mind that because i feel like they're easily counterable if you especially if you depending on what if you get your super uh as well or other options like there's weapons you can use to counter them as well um games are faster than standard elimination which is nice uh, more varied engagements across the map healthier sandbox etc so i think that's good uh they're changing guild of the flawless to make it a little bit more difficult which again i think that's fine uh and then uh, so, oh, a trials emblem. This thing is kind of sick. I like that a lot. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, all good changes, I think. Oh, and we're getting rusted lands. I'm surprised this junction didn't win. I was, I was almost convinced that this junction was gonna win that. So, and then new prime gear, which is cool, and then uh, wallpapers. So overall, I think, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about the change. I can't wait for season of the deep. I think it's gonna be an absolute banger. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed this little rundown, the recap of the TWAB. My name is Jopa. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like I said, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It helps me out tremendously. It shows you want to see more Destiny 2 content from me. And I know I read fast, but I try to keep these videos as concise as possible. So I appreciate your support. My name is Jopa, and I'll catch you all later.